Hey everybody, welcome back to JVD Studios. I am JVD, and you know, I apologize, guys, for many a reason. Uh, it's the 10th of February, and I'm now putting up one of my first videos of the year that should have been done, oh, I don't know, maybe um, a month and nine days ago. <laughs> I always put up a resolution video on the 1st of January. My apologies for not bringing it. Uh, I will hopefully make a resolution video probably tomorrow. Uh, or I just might forget it all together and just say whatever. Whatever happens, happens. And whatever I can get out, I can get out. Now, in this video, I'm deciding to do a different route. Uh, a friend of mine, Scott Garibay, great, great guy, wonderful friend. I talked to him because I've been watching a lot of his videos lately on D&D &D and it's been making me want to get back into the campaigns so much that I've missed doing so much for so long. And um, I asked him, I said, you know, what if I do videos about D&D &D and give some opinions maybe on your videos and, and what I think and everything like that. And he said he would comment, he would watch and comment either in the comment section or via video. So that's pretty cool. And I wanted to start with this topic. It's a bit of a controversial one, but you know, hear me out on it. It's uh, Jennifer Kretschmer and the attunement or non-attunement wheelchair, which will be coming out in Candle Keep Mysteries for players who are disabled. Now, Candle Keep Mysteries is a book for D&D that's going to be coming out, if it's not already out, I don't think it is, and Jennifer Kretschmer is a part of the uh, design team for this game, and we've learned that the book is pre gen Adventures. I'd rather run a homebrew than a pre gen Adventure. That's what I'm doing now. And the funny thing is, when I saw this, or when I heard about this, I should say, off of the video uh, that my friend Scott made, which I will hook up in this video. Uh, if you click on the watermark, which I think is down in this corner. Oh, I'm going to try to point right in this corner here. You can subscribe to me. Later on in the video, I'm going to have a uh, mark probably somewhere over in, in, in this direction. I don't know yet, but you'll find it. And I'll hook you up with this video that he made. Um, the biggest thing is the combat wheelchair, which the uh, player who is disabled... I apologize. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, the combat wheelchair that Jennifer Kretschmer has described um, will not take in a two-minute slot, which is incredible, I think, because in D&D 5th edition we only get three of them in the set. Now, I'm agreeing with that. Scott um, Scott disagreed, and I overheard all of his points, and I understand where he's coming from. The combat wheelchair will have a lot of benefits, a lot of bonuses to add, and it can help pretty much change a player's suboptimal uh, build but at the same time, make one have everybody go for that wheelchair. Well, while that is a good idea for some, not for all, I think the no attunement slot is a good idea. And it's basically for the reason that since all players have three attunement slots that they can keep on their person. If you have that wheelchair become an attunement factor, then you're basically putting the other player, the player who is disabled, unfortunately, at risk or at a handicap. No pun intended. No pun intended. You're putting them at a disadvantage because that means other players will have three. That person, him or her, will have Two. So later on in the game, if they have something that they really would want, 
let's say, a third item that they could use, ultimately, they can't. Because it's not under attunement. That it needs to be attuned, and they need to have it. Well, that creates an issue. Because, you know, if you have the wheelchair and you attuned it, okay, now you're down to two spots, right? So let's go ahead and then break it down further. Let's say I'm running the campaign and the attunement factor for the wheelchair is one. You have two other items that give you a permanent plus one to, I don't know, I'm going to say, you know, agility and one to, like, wisdom or whatever. I'm just going to throw them out there. What if the next thing I give you would have a chance to give you a plus one to something else, too? Guess what? You can't use that item that's going to give you that if it needs attunement because the wheelchair is giving you the third one. Which means you're going to have to take another shot and lose either the plus one int or the plus one agility. Or con or whatever it is. Plus one dexterity. Plus one intel. You're going to have to lose one of them. You know? just to get the plus in whatever. That's kind of messed up because right there you can have a plus one in dexterity, plus one in constitution, and plus one in intel, and your wheelchair. But instead you have a wheelchair, a dex plus one, and an intel plus one, and no place to put that com plus one. Guess what? You're either going to dump one of these two, or... That one's not going to be any good. And yes, I use the sound effect. Because you're, if you use an attunement spot, or if you have to give it to somebody who needs to help attune it, you're putting them at a disadvantage. It's not really a, a good idea overall. If three, if three is, a, is a bad number. Three, in my opinion, is a bad number to have. 3-5 where you can carry as much av attunement items that you can possibly carry on your person, whether it be on this hand, both hands, your head, your neck, your stomach, your legs, your butt, your feet, doesn't matter. If you can carry it and it's attuned, you got it. 5th edition chopped it and said, nope, you can only get 3. So... Well, I do see Scott's points, and I do agree with him on a little bit of it. I think the non-attunement's better. I just do. You know, you're giving a chance for all the players to then set up on equal footing, equal level. And with Jen uh, Jennifer Kirchmer doing this uh, in Candle Keep Mysteries, it's incredible. It's going to be insane to see how the rest of it turns out. Um, another thing I want to bring up, huge, is the fact that she went on to a D&D &D show, hosted by one of the D&D &D hosts, and corrected them every time, and said, no, the word you're looking for is disabled. That is incredible. And I give her credit, because I work with uh, Special Olympians and Special Olympics. My cousin is in Special Olympics. And they have disabled. They're not uh, any different from us. No, they're not. That person just has a, 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 a f something, you know, a, a something extra special with them, you know. An extra, and I mean extra special in a good way. I never, never badmouth uh, people. So overall, uh, back on topic though, I do think Jennifer Kretschmer is correct. I do think the the wheelchair should not gain uh, or take up an attunement spot. Um, should it be OP? No. I, that's another thing I don't believe in. It can be a combat wheelchair and give the player who has disability some bonuses, but you don't want to make it too overpowered to where eventually it might need attunement. And uh, we understand that the pre-gen adventure is going to contain cubes in one of them. 
that will just create smooth spots for a, uh, a wheelchair to go ahead and just slide up on in, make the attacks and slide up on out. That's a big thing too and it's still fascinating to me. Um, but like I said overall, I, I, I do think that... I think that in the end with D&D we're kind of getting shortchanged on attunement items that you can have capping the max at 3. Uh, I might just create an item in my game or a spell in my game that will allow a person to get one more attunement just because I can. You know? But overall, I think 3 is too little and the attunement for a wheelchair like this shouldn't happen. Now I do think Scott, like I said, has some good points on this video. I highly, highly advise you check his video out. I will put it in the link in the end of this video, okay? Uh, but I also want to know what you guys at home think. Should this wheelchair, if you're a D&D &D fan and you've known about this, should the wheelchair have attunement? Should it? Should it not? And why or why not? I really want to figure this out. I really want to know what you guys in the D&D &D community think. I want to start doing this a lot more. It was a really, really fun topic to cover. The next one I want to do... Um, will probably be about uh, celebrity in D&D, &D, in my opinion, and Matthew Mercer's impact on the D&D &D community. We've all known Critical Role, right? Right. Let's talk about that in the next video. I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I hope everything goes the way you want it to, and by all means, again, the subscription idea and the bell idea are totally free. Please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and get all updates for all future videos. I'm Johnny V. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. May all your die rolls be crit hits.